Welcome back, folks. One of the things I see uh, continues to come up in, in all sorts of electronics forums is uh, people asking the question, uh, what's the difference between a MOSFET and a bipolar junction transistor? You know, the usual reply is one's a current control device and the other one's a voltage control device. But I think that uh, it, that doesn't really answer the question in an intuitive way. And to be fair, the data sheets aren't all that intuitive either. So your general purpose amplifier here, your BJT, is a current amplifier. And what it does is you put a small current into the base, you can control a bigger current down through the collector and out the emitter. These are the main specifications of a bipolar transistor. What is its current gain? And you can see here, it varies depending on, on what kind of current is going through it. It has kind of a sweet spot in here for this particular transistor with a collector current of 10 milliamps, you've got your highest possible gain and that drifts off as the current goes down and gets a little bit less again as the current goes up. But this is what the specifications are here. We're, we're talking about the current gain of the device. Still, again, it's not that intuitive. I mean, what does that look like in real life? And if you go over here to the MOSFET, we can see that, um, you know, again, all the specifications are with you know, threshold voltages and on voltages. And of course, there's a static source on resistance, but then again, that's given in terms of different voltages as well. So, I mean, all the specifications here are based on gate voltages. All the specifications here are based on base current. But uh, it's not really it's not really that intuitive. Uh, do you, can you imagine immediately what the curve of that's going to be? How is it going to react in the circuit? Of course, you can go down a little bit further into the specifications. You can look at all these curves here, and that gives you a little bit more of an intuitive idea of how these things work. It should be pointed out that while the transistor is truly an amplifier, you give it a input current and it amplifies that current on the output. MOSFET is not an amplifier. The MOSFET is a, basically it is a voltage controlled resistor. So it's, it's taking one thing and changing it completely to another thing. It's not amplifying a voltage, it's not amplifying a current. In fact, for a MOSFET, as you can see here in the diagram, it kind of shows you how the thing is constructed. The gate is literally a capacitor over what is the channel going from the, the drain to the source. So there, there can be no current going in it in a DC configuration. Uh, it does have um, a little bit of capacitance. I think in, in this particular device, it's around about somewhere in uh, the 50 picofarad range uh, maximum, more typically around about 20 picofarads. So uh, at high frequency AC, you're going to get some current in there, but for uh, you know, DC, there should be absolutely no current flowing into this device at all. So it, it can't be amplifying current and uh, it can't be amplifying voltage either because it, you know, it, it's not a voltage source. I mean, it can be, it could be put in line uh, between one voltage potential and another voltage potential can control the current. So it's not amplifying anything in that sense. It's acting like a, a voltage control resistor. Anyway, Enough, uh, enough talking about this. We're not going to get much from the specifications. Now, the reason I, I chose these two devices because they're kind of basically devices that live in the same realm, right? They're both low voltage devices that they both handle about 200 milliamps of current. They're in the same kind of package. They're laid out in the same way. It looks like that you could take one out and pop the other one in. So uh, that's one of the reasons I chose these two devices here because I can, in the test circuit I'm going to build, we're going to be able to just... Uh, test one device and then plop the other one in right in its place. And I can try and give you a better idea then, a more intuitive idea of what it means to be a voltage control device and a current control device. Hopefully that's the goal anyway. Okay, so here's the circuits that I'm gonna be using. You can see they're basically the same circuit. There's been a change in that this arrangement of the voltmeter and the ammeter have been switched around. And the reason for that is in this case here, because uh, we're going to be passing a current into the base here, we don't want the uh, burden voltage of the ammeter to affect uh, what we're reading as the base voltage. And in this case over here, because there's going to be no current going in here, we do not want the uh, current going through the voltage meter to show up uh, in, in the current going into the device here. We want to be able to see that it is a zero current rather than the current going into the meter. So that's why I've switched them around in this particular case. But it's still basically the same circuit. So we'd be able to just uh, pop uh, one device in and 
in place of the other and, and do the tests on it. And we just got a 50 ohm resistor here to limit the current and seven volts. We're going to supply down to it. The, this potentiometer here is going to be used to provide the voltage and or the current uh, to go into the device. Without further ado, let's go down to the lab and uh, we'll start looking at these two different devices and how they behave. Okay, so here we are. We're all set up here. I hope you can see this meter properly. Sometimes it gets a little reflection from one of the lights off it up there. I try to angle it back a little bit. Anyway, let's, uh, let's have a look here what we've got. So we've got the potentiometer here. We're, we're feeding that into our... In this case, we've got the BJT in here. So this would be our base current and this would be our base voltage. And just so we showed on the schematic, we have the, the base voltage we're reading after the ammeter here so we can get exactly the voltage that is across the base. And this is going to measure the collector current here through this uh, effectively 50 ohm resistor here. Well, actually 55 ohms. I've got four 220 ohm resistors in parallel just to give me a little bit more power dissipation capability. But uh, so let's start turning this up. So what do we expect? Well, we know that a BJT has a junction between the base and the emitter. And so we should see the thing starting to conduct around about half a volt or so, maybe a little bit more than that. And that's when the current will start to flow. So the voltage should rise quite nicely until we get to that point. And then as the current starts flowing, the voltage shouldn't rise that much, but the current should go up going into the base. And by the same token, the current through the collector should rise. And let's see what, if that's what happens. So here we go here, 0.2 volts, 0.3 volts, 0.4 volts. We're getting a tiny little bit of uh, 36 microamps of, of electric current, 1.9 nanoamps of uh, base current here at 5.55 at volts. At 0.6 volts, so we got one microamp going into it and uh, 363 microamps down through the collector. Let's bring that up to 10 microamps. So for 10 microamps, you got 0.66 volts on the base and we got 3.7, 3. let's call it 3.8 going down through the collector. So we basically got uh, a gain of 380 here. Now let's bring that up now, increase the current through the base by 10 times. We'll bring that up to 100 microamps. All right, now you can see that the voltage across the base has only gone up by 0 0.06 volts. And uh, our current here has actually gone more than 10 times. And we're kind of in the sweet spot now, the transistor, so we've got a, a gain of over 400. And uh, let's double that again to see where that base voltage goes. So we're going to double the current up to 200 microamps. We can see that the base voltage has only gone up by about 20 millivolts. So bring that back down again. Well, now let's have a look at the MOSFET. Well, let's get that voltage down here. Pop out the transistor. Pop in the MOSFET. All right. Now, remember, I showed you on the schematic that we should change this, the location of this to over here. And I'll show you why. Just uh, we'll randomly throw up some voltage on the threshold here. And we can see we've got 2.56 volts we're measuring, and we got a two, yeah, 260 nanoamps. Well, that's basically the current that is going through this voltmeter here. It's got a 10 mega ohm input. So we're going to read a current going through that. We don't want to do that. So that's why we move this over here. And we can see indeed that even at 2.56 volts here, which is a, a little bit above the threshold voltage of the gate, we have zero current going in. So we're not, we're not amplifying anything here. What we're doing is we're changing the resistance down through the drain to the source, and we're changing it according to the voltage. Let's start down at zero volts again. And we go up, let's go up to one volt. And we go up to two volts. We should see something starting to happen soon. Yep, here we go. So 2.5, we need a gate voltage of 2.5. So that's, that's roughly the threshold voltage right there. And it would depend again on what kind of current you need. So if you only needed one milliamp, 
you could get away with 2.2 uh, volts or thereabouts. But you can see as the voltage continues to go up from the threshold voltage, the current through the output to continues to go up and it actually goes up very rapidly, which indicates that this particular MOSFET, the 2N7000, is really meant to be a switch device and it does not have a very nice linear region. It, it very rapidly changes. So we've only gone up half a volt on the gate and we're up to 71 milliamps already. So it, it really turns on very quickly. It's not really useful as a small signal amplifier for that reason. It's better utilized as a switch. Okay, so even up here at 3.73, we've got zero current going into the, the gate of this. And we've got 100 milliamps coming down through the, the drain. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get much more in this particular case because I do have 55 ohms. only got 7 volts going into it. So we can keep turning up that gate voltage. But we're not going to get a heck of a lot more current down through it. There, we're up to 6 volts there. All right. So that's it. I hope this points out kind of the difference between a voltage control device and a current control device and how a MOSFET is not really an amplifier. So you put a voltage in and you get a change in resistance that as the voltage goes higher, the resistance goes lower. Whereas the transistor can be looked at as a true current amplifier. Okay, folks, that's all I have for you today. And this is the final video for 2023. So have a great New Year's Day. And don't do too much drinking on New Year's Eve. I know I'm not going to follow that advice myself. We'll see you in the new year. In the meantime, try to get some electronics done. Bye-bye now.